Greetings, Saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. Brought to you by Eternal Values Ministries dot com. You know, I've been fortunate enough when I got saved about 40 years ago, when I was about 20 years old, I went to a church that taught me about the grace of God and also about the preservation of His Word, preserving God's Word. Now in the English language, I believe God preserved His Word in the King James Bible, the King James Version. And so I see all these different versions we have today, these uh, different manuscripts, families of manuscripts, different kind that these versions come out from. And it's a, it's a mistake to believe that people who believe God preserved His Word in the King James uh, Version, that it's for all the languages. Maybe there's a few people that believe that, I don't know. But it's in the English language. When Martin Luther um, translated the Word of God, he used the same manuscript the King James Version comes from, but he did it in, uh, in German. And so it's that way in, in other languages all over the world also. It's the manuscript which you translate from. Of course, you've got to be able to translate correctly also. Now, I want to speak today about um, the King James Bible and the other manuscripts. Um, I'm going to use the NIV. That's the most popular Bible in use today, I believe. Um, and show that the NIV is a pagan Bible. Pagan. And it's uh, a homosexual Bible. It promotes paganism, and paganism promotes all kinds of immorality, including uh, sodomy, homosexuality. Now, I'm going to read you something here, a word from the Lord. And like I always say, you, uh, you pray, you test the spirits, and you decide for yourself. If, uh, if this is coming from the Lord, you got to test the spirits, the Word of God says. Don't believe me or anybody, but you yourself go to the Lord and test the spirits. Now, the Word of the Lord says here, Come and let us hear the Word of God. It is not inspired as the original autographs, but are copies of originals. In other words, when God preserves His Word, he does it through copies, multiplying the copies. It's not inspired like the original autographs when men wrote by the Holy Spirit. In other words, God directly gave them by His Spirit what to write. That's inspired. All Scripture, if it's Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto all or truly furnished unto all good works. I believe that's uh, 1 Timothy uh, 3.16. And so, God's Word is inspired when they wrote it down, and then from there on, people copied it and preserved it, and God had oversight. He supervised the preservation of His Word. If this was not true, then how do you know where's the Word of God? Because the versions we have, there's some vast differences, a lot of differences in them, and, and not just uh, things that make no difference, but in the virgin birth of Christ, important doctrines of, um, of Christ being God, God in the flesh, and, and things of that nature. It's done subtle, it's subtle, but it's there. Now, so let's, let's continue on. It is not inspired as the original autographs, but are copies of originals. I, the Lord, have given them to my scribes, my workmen, my publishers, to put out my word throughout the earth. Here is the problem with them who do not believe that the King James believe the King James English Bible, that's where God preserved His Word in the English language. 
They have no other credible source of manuscripts to turn to. The other manuscripts are corrupt as a simple reading of them will prove. Without my word, um, those who read only the corrupted manuscripts have no anchor of, corrupt, of correction to compare. Therefore, they take on the agenda of the corrupted manuscript. Um, what the Lord here is saying is that, you know, if you, if you grew up on the King James Bible and you picked up another Bible, let's say the NIV, and you started reading it, and where the NIV differed from the King James, you would automatically come, automatically would come to your mind the one the version you always read, the King James version, and you would have to understand it, the correct understanding. Right? But if you just give somebody an NIV who just got saved, they're, they're, they weren't into reading uh, any Bible at all. And they start with the NIV, or these, these corrupted versions, we're talking about the NIV today, what happens is the agenda, and there's an agenda, saints, there's a demonic, satanic agenda, a goal to destroy your soul in, the, in these uh, false Bibles. That's why they're false. That's why they're, um, they're no good. Burn them. Instead of burning Korans, we need to be burning these Bibles. All right? And so, let me give you a, a short example here. We'll get more into it later on. Um, in Zechariah, in a couple of, a couple of parts there, they use the word, a couple of scriptures, they use the word um, capstone. Capstone. Alright? But if you look and you research it, the word is supposed to, has to do with the foundation. Has to do with cornerstones. So, what's the difference? Well, when you turn your, when you take your one dollar bill, you got Washington in the front and you turn it around, you got a pyramid, and above it is floating a capstone. Floating above the pyramid with an eye in it, the all-seeing eye. And I can tell you for sure that all-seeing eye is not God watching us. It's Lucifer, because it's Masonic. And it says so on the dollar bill, if you know how to read it. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is actually the truth. It's a conspiracy, but it's the truth. All right? And so we have nothing to do with a capstone. You got these great pyramids in Egypt. One of them flat on top. No capstone yet. Maybe the Antichrist, when he comes, will put the capstone on it. All right? But that's what the capstone is. But we're dealing with the foundation. So they're subtle about it. Because when you go to the New Testament, the NIV, where, where the King James says foundation, it uses the word foundation. But only it's in, it's in certain parts of the Bible, they're, they're very subtle about it. And what it does is, it puts the idea of a capstone in your head. And then, when you, when you start looking, when you start uh, reading about um, the New World Order, when you start reading about uh, things of, of the occult and that nature, and you see that, that eye with that capstone floating above the pyramid, it takes you back to the scripture, it makes you think this is scriptural. They're brainwashing you. It's like a subliminal. And that's what they're doing, saints. This is demonic in origin. So um, another another place is where um, the uh, NIV will use the, the the words "new order." What new order? New world order? What are, what the world are they talking about? We have a new Jerusalem that comes out of heaven. There's going to be a new heaven and new earth. A new order. See, there the words are similar to the to these new age occultic Masonic words that they're using, and this is where they want to brainwash you. And if you never picked up a King James, you can't replace those words with the King James words because you don't know them. So it gets it gets serious. So this is the agenda to um, to screw up the believers and to keep the lost people lost, to give them another mindset. 
corruption of manuscripts from early centuries and later in the 18 and 1900s. So the corruption started way, way back in the apostles' times. Remember Paul said in 2 Timothy, the no, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he's talking about the uh, resurrection and the rapture and the gathering together of the saints. And he says, don't be, um, don't be, uh, don't be fooled, don't be tricked. He says, he's talking, he says, that day, the coming of Christ and our gathering together unto him will not come unless there come a falling away first, apostasia. And he says, don't be deceived neither by, by, uh, by word or spirit or letter as from us. Letter as from us. In other words, he's saying they were sending phony letters, obviously with his name and other apostles and other prophets and, uh, of the scripture, fraudulent, frauds fraudulent letters. That was in the first century already going on. Paul said the mystery of iniquity does already work. It's already working. And it's for sure it's, uh, it's getting to the top now, over the top. All right. So the corruption started early with the, manus with the, with the writing of the Bible and then later on in the 1800s and 1900s with these supposedly new manuscripts we found that are closer to the original. Only problem is no one ever saw the originals. God chose to multiply copies. So how do they know it's closer to the original? They don't know. You can't know. All right? But we're going to see as we continue on in this study, how do, how do we know, how do we discern what is God's word? So the enemy had to corrupt the early manuscripts. The, uh, the early writings where, where the apostles wrote, just as he had to come into human history early, with the first two uh, human beings, Adam and Eve. He didn't wait till Cain and Zeth and others were born to come in and, and bring sin in. He came in right away to Adam and Eve. And so he's done right away with the early, earliest of these manuscripts also. Amen. Yet the Lord has preserved his elect and will also preserve his word. Is that something? When you think about how God has kept his line of his people throughout history. It was cut down to eight people on Noah's Ark, wasn't it? When he rescued Lot and his daughters from Sodom and Gomorrah, there was only a few people. Amen? Only Abraham's people could be saved by God. Israel, the covenant people in the Old Testament. So God has his elect and he has a line that this is going through. And it's the same thing with his word that he has preserved. Just like he's preserved us, his elect, he's preserved his word. He's preserved it also. And so, yet the Lord has preserved his elect and will preserve his word. Those who use other manuscripts have been deceived or are not discerning the evil intent in corruption, the corruption. The Catholic Church, occultists, Freemasons, and others use corrupt manuscripts to further their goals. When the goal is reached, they will destroy all the Bibles and their word will be God. And their word will be God. You know, when you, in the communist countries, you take North Korea, they got commandments with those names of the dictators that you got to worship them. I found this out from a voice of the martyrs and missionaries and people who have escaped from North Korea and got saved. Right? Communist countries, they don't want the word. Their, their word is God, the atheism, their, their collective uh, communist socialism. That's their word. They're the kings. All right, not, not Jesus, not his word. And we know the Bible says in John uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. Not a God. That's a corrupted manuscript. And the Word was God. And, and the Word became flesh and blood, it tells us that. In uh, John uh, 1, 14, he put, on, he put on flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Another good word, begotten, they don't like you want to leave that one out too. <laughs> All right. And so, 
to further their goals, these occultists, they, uh, they want to use these Bibles. Like I said, it's subtle, it's subliminal. So they can get you into their uh, world order, not the Bibles, not a biblical worldview, but the pagan worldview that comes from Satan on this world. And you look at Islam, look at uh, the communist countries, look at Rome, Roman Catholicism. It's all the same thing. These are, these are other kinds of uh, words from other gods. The only difference with the ones that say that the Bible is that they're counterfeits. A counterfeit is anti-Christ. That's what anti means when you say anti-Christ. It means instead of Christ. A counterfeit Christ. These are counterfeit words, saints. The purpose of the corrupt manuscripts is to dis dissuade believers from a holy, sanctified life that comes from the Holy Spirit produced from the seed of the uncorruptible Word of God. The Apostle Peter talks about this. He says, uh, the uncorruptible Word of God. Uncor uncorruptible seed. Amen? Not corruptible. Uncorruptible. There's a genuine Word of God and then there's a devil who has another goal, another agenda for you to, to take you to hell for eternity, to wreck your life as a Christian, to keep the lost people lost, and to get you into this, uh, this, this new age stuff that's coming on the earth. That's their plan. And that's what these Bibles are, these corrupted ones. Their final goal is to make apostates, apostates, for you to fall away from the Lord. That's what they want you to do. Note that when the Catholic monks, like Luther, Luther was a Catholic monk, he would go, his own biography he wrote, he would go up and down these cement stairs on his knees until they were bloody doing penitence. Penitence. The Vatican translation is penitence. The Greek manuscripts, the Texas Receptus, the ones God's preserved, the majority text, is repentance. The difference is penitence, you suffer for your sins, and that's supposed to somehow get you better before God. Repentance is you confess your sins and, and God forgives you and your life changes. So there's a big, big difference in this sense. A big difference. So Luther, who was a Catholic monk, when he got saved, um, he started translating the Bible, not from Catholic manuscripts, okay, but from the majority text, that's where all the majority of the copies are, thousands and thousands of them, like 95, 98% of the New Testament is from this Greek majority text called the Texas Receptus, the NIV, and all these other perversions is just a few percentage in existence compared to the one that King James comes from. You see what I'm saying? And Luther, he didn't go and translate from those manuscripts he had. He took, he took the Greek ones and he translated his German Bible from there and that Bible is equivalent to the King James Version in the German language. Praise the Lord. So, I the Lord have always preserved my word even as it was hidden in the wilderness. And as Noah preserved the human race with eight people. You know, when I had to think about this. What does the Lord mean? The Lord has preserved his word even as it was hidden in the wilderness. He's talking about Hebrews 11. If you read the, the Hall of Faith, all these people had faith. Noah had faith, he built an ark. Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac. And all these by faith. By faith, we know that God uh, made the earth. He made the heavens and the earth. That things seen were not made by things that are not seen. We know that God, God created these things. And, he, and as you keep on reading Hebrews 11, he talks about these saints that dwelt out in the wilderness and in caves. They had to hide out because they were being hunted down because they trusted Christ. Some were put to death, put to the flame. Some were sawn, literally sawn 
asunder. History has it that Isaiah was put in a tree trunk and sawn in half. So all kinds of cruel, cruel tortures. So they would, and when they wandered around out there, guess what? They had the preserved word of God because they didn't go and run to the Pope for his Bible. They didn't go and worship the Pope. They stayed out in the wilderness in caves, in, in the forests, because they wanted to worship God according to their conscience. They knew the true and the living God and they had the real word of God. The Waldesians had that, the Huguenots, they were all being massacred in France and other parts of the world during the Catholic Inquisitions. They were killing the Christians. The Roman Catholic Church, being an extension of the Roman Empire, continued in their murders and tortures of the saints. This is done by the Lord's design to try to test his elect. The same today with the false manuscripts, the false versions. This is to test, to try my saints, if they will search out the truth or be content with the enemy's gospel. You know, just because it sounds good in some parts, or it's easier to understand in the old English, or whatever your excuse might be, uh, there's no reason to compromise the true word of God. Amen, saints? The corrupt manuscripts and versions uh, cannot keep my elect from salvation, for I, the Lord, have not allowed it. In other words, the Lord did not allow Satan to corrupt him so bad that you can't read parts of those corrupt Bibles and still get saved. The only thing is, you cannot take in the sincere milk of the Word and grow as babies have to grow when they drink milk and take in solid food. You can't get any solid food to grow. You stay a baby, you stay immature in the faith and easily manipulate it by the prince and the power of the air, Satan. And then they're more easier to fall away from the Lord. That's, that's what they're trying to do, saints. So the Lord has not allowed this. That's why Luther got saved. He was really able to read that Catholic version and the just shall live by faith and God saved him. Amen. Praise God. But I have allowed him to, to cause my people to fall away by their willful ignorance. Are you willfully ignorant? You don't want to hear what I'm saying, what other people are telling you, that there are corrupt versions? Wake up, saints. Some in the church are not genuine wheat. The wheat and the tares. They're not genuine Christians. But our plants, they're planted by the enemy to produce confusion, dissension in the ranks of my church. They are they, they're the ones that produce uh, homosexual versions. The NIV comes out now, you see how this progresses. Now the NIV comes out with a, a gender neutral Bible. Where, where have I heard that before, gender neutral? Who wants to, where, where is it that men want to go use women's washrooms? How is that? <laughs> huh? Okay, so this promotes paganism. And paganism promotes fornication, homosexuality, all kinds of immorality. That's what it does, saints. And so the NIV is a pagan counterfeit of God's word. Therefore, it is a homosexual Bible, for all pagans have no moral foundations to stand on. Where is the moral foundation without the Lord, without his word? Where is it? You wonder why you see um, people wearing less and less clothes. You see men wearing their, um, their pants halfway down their rear ends. Isn't that just what you want to see? Some of them got to walk with their legs spread out because they're about to trip, they're about to fall. You know? And this is supposed to be cool. This is what the devil does. He puts these lies in people's minds and, and he makes it a big latest fashion and he says it's cool. And so people start dressing like this. You know, uh, young ladies with their uh, 
pants way below the belly button, pierced up, halter tops, nakedness. Nakedness is not of God. If you remember when Jesus, well, I believe it was the Lord Jesus, the Lord, when he went to Adam and Eve after they sinned and they were naked and after they sinned they knew they were naked and they were ashamed and they tried to hide from God and God took animal skins and he clothed them. That means he killed an animal. He shed blood. The shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of the new covenant supposed to put clothes on you. Not nakedness. It's supposed to put clothes on you. Read the Old Testament. The priest had to dress a certain way. So that when he went up the stairs, the people couldn't look up and see his nakedness. Remember Noah's son Ham saw his father, father's nakedness. And it was a curse to his future generations for that. See, the gospel puts clothes on people, not take, takes clothes off. Paganism. Any God you want, worship how you want, do what you want, brings this immorality, brings this sodomy, this homosexuality, this transhumanism, and this ascend, this evolutionary ascend to Godhood. The original lie in Genesis 3 when he said to Eve, you'll be like gods, disobey God, eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you will be like God. Well, here we are, we're like God, right? We're about to blow ourselves all up here. It's getting worse, saints. And so, it's a homosexual Bible, the NIV. It's a pagan Bible. As with people, so it is with these organizations that promote the false versions, manuscripts. You shall know them by their fruit. You're gonna, you know people by their fruit. Okay, does a good tree produce evil fruit? Bad fruit? No. Does a, does a bad tree produce good fruit? No. A good tree produces good fruit. In other words, if you have the Lord and the Lord is in you and you yield yourself to walk with the Lord, you will produce good fruit. And you cannot produce anything evil when you walk with the Lord. But an evil tree produces evil fruit, saints produces evil fruit. So look at, you got to look at the fruit of these organizations. You got to look at what, what are they doing? What are they promoting? Right? When, I, when I pick up these perversions, and, I, and they always got notes on the side, not found in the best manuscript. They might, they might put in a, the scripture in it the same way they do in the King James, but then they put doubt in your mind. They'll put a note there, and you look down at the note, not found in the best manuscripts. How in the world do they know? They never saw the originals. You see the, you see the game that's going on? And it's putting doubt in your mind right there. Do we got God's word or not? Well, that's what I want you to understand, saints. You can rest assured that in 2015, you got God's word if you got the right manuscript it comes from. And in English, it's the King James Version. Praise the Lord. Now, he says here, the fruit. Okay, look at the fire of the Reformation. The Reformation. When Luther came out and, and nailed his, what is it, 95, 99 thesis to the university wall and the printing press just came out and it was invented and they started, the university students started printing up thousands of these and they spread it out and the Reformation started. And what brought it on, man? What, 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 what did they use to translate the Bible than these reformers? They didn't use the Vaticanus. They didn't use the Catholic Bibles, the Alexandrian texts, or these other perversions. They used the Greek. Texas Receptus, the majority text. There's a reason for this, saints. There's a reason. They, they were guided by, by the Holy Spirit of God. Remember I said that the translation itself is not inspired, but God preserved his copies. He supervised all this. This is important for us to understand, saints. How men and women and children were burnt, set on fire, tortured in the most sadistical ways. Why? Because the revival that came from the Reformation came from the recovery 
of the preserved manuscript, the Greek text is receptors. When they started translating, these reformers, when they started translating from the Latin, God's word into the common language of the people, man, the fire of the Holy Ghost took place and people started to get saved. No more did they have to go to their priest into the confessional or pray to Mary or get some kind of absolution or forgiveness by giving some money here or something like that. They were saved.